Hi there. The purpose of this video is to help fellow system administrators figure out how to stop etc. resolve.conf from repopulating seemingly at will. As it turns out, there's a number of different places that that can be can happen. It can be triggered to automatically change, and we've got to lock this down. In my case, I'm uh, getting ready to set up a somber environment, and I don't want anything to mess with that. So. Here's how we made that happen. Let me show you the magic. There is something called a DH client exit hook. Now, they, this is just one of the ways that your Resolve CONF can get overwritten, but it's an important one. So, in your directory, etc., DHCP client, um, DHCP, DH client exit hooks D, there's also an enter hooks there. And I'm not entirely sure I picked the better of the two, but it seems to make sense this would indicate that the script has already run. Now, I'm going to look at what's inside of there. We see we have a DH client SM hook. You can call that whatever you want. It's my own symlink to my own file. You can create your own file and put it wherever you want. Let's take a look at this file right here. I've got a little bit overkill. I think all you need to do in here is put a single line um, after the bash uh, declaration that runs your script and passes it the two variables along with an ampersand. And this is basically a script that just never looks back. It's divorced from the original hook. It's out there on its own uh, running. And, and that's an important distinction because if you put an include in here or you put an sh in here to run that script, it's still attached to the mothership um, and the hook will fail. The hook looks for very specific language to be in it um, and, you know, for, for maybe setting an app, an adapter or something like that, reason is one of the variables it allows. I think there are a total of four variables that you can use. Our custom script uses a lot more than that. So let's take a look at our script. All right, starting at the top, the declaration, of course, uh, instantiate a variable right here. We are populating uh, this script with whatever variables are in etc. environment variables. And that's important because when called from DH client and spun off like that, they don't get here. So this is the only way they can be picked up. Now, uh, here we just echo a few of these variables to a text file so I can kind of see what's happening after the fact. And you can look at the contents of that text file later and see exactly uh, what variables were passed in. Here we're going to test to see if the system D resolved service is running. Uh, if it is, we want it gone. So we're going to disable it. We're going to stop it. I tried to actually remove the resolve CONF uh, package itself that comes with Ubuntu, and it was very resistant to letting that happen. So I decided not to push it um, because bad things can happen if you really try to drill down on that level and, and, and extract something that you later regret. Um, so I've just disabled it, and it'll be disabled every time this uh, script runs. Now we've got a, an if else, uh, if else else a script here, and this basically is um, designed to let me know where this script was called from. So if the variables equal these values, then I know it was called um, that this script was called directly and not from within DH, not a DH client hook trigger that we actually ran this script directly, which you can do anytime you want to change your resolve uh, CONF values to the predictable ones that you want it to be. The second one lets me know that it was run as a DH client triggered event. And the third one, I don't really know how it was run, um, and that's on the list, just in case that were to happen. Okay, uh, next we check to see if the resolve CONF file exists. If it does, we pull it out of there. We then touch uh, or create a new resolve CONF, and below that, these last lines are where we insert whatever we want to be in our resolve CONF file. The bottom here, you can see we have the specific name service added. The first two are, in fact, environment variables that I have tucked away in the system, and uh, and the third one, um, I think that's a standard Samba IP. Anyway, uh, you see we use how populated <coughs> as a comment within the resolve CONF file. And uh, 
<coughs> various other comments that are of value to us. So let's go ahead and show you how this works. I'm going to go to the etc folder and purposely remove resolve CONF. And just to show you that it is gone, I will cat resolve CONF, and you see it's not there. And now we're going to run DH client, and that's it, it's done. And now we'll just do that same cat, and you see we have a resolve CONF uh, that is spelled out exactly the way we want it to be. So that's it. I hope that helps you in, uh, in getting around uh, this nightmare that all of us have to deal with. Uh, I'm sure it's a good thing for the vast majority of people, but when you're trying to uh, hardwire your server to make sure nothing goes wrong in the network, this is a necessary. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.